The aggravator was my attempt to create a cheaper version of the original Frustrator by relying on a compact all-triangle footprint. It wrapped three drop-down loot rooms in the most efficient fashion around a triangle core. Since according to the comments, the aggravator is still in use after one and a half years, I felt it's time for an upgrade. Meet the Aggravator 2. It retains and improves on the aggravator's main features. A starter unit. Three auto turret pods for 360 degree coverage. A much more open second floor living space. Three drop down loot rooms with up to seven large boxes. Each of them having two layers of undrainable traps to make door raids even more aggravating. And a TC in the core protected by a vending machine. Thanks to that vending machine, I have not found a raid path that requires less than 26 rockets to break into the TC compartment and retrieve its loot. In case that raiders know exactly what they are doing, bring the right mix of explosives and by chance pick the right triangle, they can destroy the tool cupboard for the equivalent of a bit more than 19 rockets. However, in most cases, they will spend 26 plus rockets to even destroy the TC. Thanks to the separation of the main loot rooms, a full raid is even more expensive. I have not managed to break into all three main loot rooms for less than 40 rockets. In its basic configuration, the base costs about 17k stone, 5k metal frags and 250 high qual, which is perfectly achievable for a duo or trio. With a resulting upkeep of 2.9k stone, 2.6k metal fragments and 47 high qual per day, the base has an excellent cost to protection ratio. It is also quite easy to extend. At the end of the video I showcase how to add a minicopter hangar, an external TC and a compound, or even a shooting floor. On to the tour. The entrance of the base is a standard single door airlock. Above the entrance we find a couple of drop chests. Thanks to the garage doors, the main living space can remain much more open than in the predecessor. We got three chutes protected by ladder hatches. Each one of these corners contains another utility area. Down here we find one of the two spawn rooms. Above this chute we find the optional roof access. This chute brings us to a standard loot room with seven large boxes. It is protected by two garage doors, which allows to deploy two lines of defense. If raiders get past the first shotgun trap and then destroy the second garage door, these shotgun traps will shred them. This main loot room contains the electrical setup that runs those auto turrets. And this main loot room has TC access. It uses a vending machine to give extra protection to the TC, an approach by Crisp shown to me by Rust Daddy. Point at the vending machine to open the door. Then the TC can be accessed through that vending machine. While this exploit is not perfect, it can drive the cost to break into the TC compartment from 4 up to 9 or even 13 rockets, depending on whether raiders use the right combination of explosives. That's it for the tour, on to the build. Let's verify that the footprint fits. Start with a ring of triangles around a triangle, then extend it by another set of triangles. Add another foundation for the exit. Claim the spot by placing a TC onto the center triangle. Place walls onto two randomly picked sides. Place it into the corner against the wall like this. If it's realistic for you to get an armored door soonish, close it off with a single door. Otherwise close it off with a window frame. By randomly choosing the side from which the TC gets accessed, even raiders who have seen this video have to guess. In front of the TC, turn those three foundations into a starter unit. Use the rear two triangles for your starter items. Once metal fragments are cooking, replace the doors with sheet metal doors. Extend by another four triangles and seal the entrance with two double doors.
create a shoot above the first triangle of this extension. Leave the upper ceiling wood. Now repeat those steps one more time. Above the last open triangle, already built the third shoot. However, until we have a proper second floor entrance, you can leave this wall out. You will be left with a long corridor that you can use for all the items you need. In the corner behind the DC, we built the first main loot room. This completes the starter unit. Eventually, you want to replace all double doors with garage doors. Use a furnace, a ladder or even a triangle ladder hatch to get onto the second floor. To the right of each chute, add a garage door and a window. Add wall frames between the chutes and surrounding the core of the base. Eventually, those frames will be filled with garage doors. Other than that, close out the ceiling. Remember to leave one of the floor tiles above one of the chutes wood if you consider adding roof access later on. Next to those windows is an ideal spot for your workbenches and the research table. Above the chute is a great place to put down more boxes. Next, we built the honeycomb. This is a good moment to re-evaluate the location of the entrance to the base in case you changed your mind. Create an airlock like this and honeycomb this side in the process. If you do not have the ladder hatch blueprint, use a furnace or a ladder to get onto the second floor. Place a window in the center and walls to the left and right of it. Close off the ceiling. Now that you have a working airlock, you can close off the last open bit in the honeycomb of the core. For the other two sides, simply surround the bottom floor with walls. The layout of the second floor will be the same. In front of those windows, add a single triangle as honeycomb. On the second floor, we create the auto turret pods. Use those newly created spaces above the honeycomb as you like. Next to the entrance, I put drop chests and the repair bench. One should be used for furnaces. Here I created a spawn point with a locker. You also got two underground rooms, which I would turn into bedrooms. Next, I show you how to finalize the loot rooms. Jump down one of the chutes. Clear out that space. Make sure that there's a wall next to the adjacent chute. Upgrade the ceilings and the inner three walls to armored. Upgrade everything else to sheet metal. If you need to save on high quality metal, leave those outer walls sheet metal. That saves 13 high qual per day without compromising too much of the base's security. Create a shelf in the last two triangles. Place a shotgun trap against the wall like this. You can rotate it as I do with the R key. Place two boxes below it. On the top floor, add another shotgun trap against the wall, pointing slightly downwards. Then add two more large boxes. Add three additional large boxes onto the floor like this. Obviously you want to keep the more valuable items in the four rear boxes. Add another shotgun trap between the doors. This way your loot room has two layers of shotgun trap protection. It's very hard to break the second door without being exposed to the shotgun traps. Repeat those steps for the other loot room that does not have access to the TC. For the loot room that provides access to the tool cupboard, we change things a bit. Make sure that the foundation on which the TC sits and the floor tile above it are upgraded to armored. As before, upgrade the rest of the loot room, fill in the last two triangles with four large boxes guarded by two shotgun traps and add in two garage doors.
If you get an armored door, let's upgrade the TC protection even further. If you used the window frame thus far, climb into the TC compartment and soft side pick it out. Replace it with an armored door opening outwards. You need to line up the vending machine perfectly in the center of this triangle. This picture should give you the necessary visual indicators. Push it as far back as you can and place it. Now rotate it and place one item inside so that it stays in that orientation. The vending machine now perfectly seals the TC and protects it from damage. To push the potential raid cost for non-expert raiders up to 13 rockets, upgrade the foundation and the doorway to armored. No worries, you can still access the TC. Just point at the rear of the vending machine until you see the open door option. When the door is open, you should be able to access the TC from the same spot. If we had placed the TC a bit forward, you could even reach the code lock, in case you needed to authorize late joiners. However, since we placed the TC against the back wall, to be able to upgrade the compartment retrospectively, the code lock should be out of reach. By the way, this is one of the things that might get patched one day. If the video has been out for a while, check the top of the description whether that might be the case. To complete the loot room, fill in the remaining space on the floor with boxes and place another shotgun trap. A few more upgrades to the upper floor and the basic configuration of the base is complete. Upgrade the center triangle of the ceiling to armored and the ring of floor tiles around it to sheet metal. Bit by bit, fill the core with garage doors. As the final step of the basic configuration, add an auto turret into each of the turret pods. Pick one of the loot rooms and place a medium battery against the inner wall. You need a windmill or four solar panels as power source. Run them into the battery. In case of solar panels, combine their output with root combiners first. The battery itself runs into another root combiner. The second input is fed from a small generator. This way you can keep the turret running even if the battery runs dry. Then I ran the output of that root combiner into a switch and the switch into a splitter. Each output of the splitter is connected to one of the outer turrets. And voila, your base has 360 degree auto turret coverage. This completes the simple version of the aggravator. If you want to keep it that way, upgrade the last floor tile to sheet metal. While I believe it's best left up to your preference how to upgrade the base, let me walk you through a few options. The easiest option is to upgrade the whole outer walls of the first floor to sheet metal. To prevent the airlock from becoming a weak point in that case, upgrade this wall to sheet and this wall to armored. This should leave the upkeep at around 3k metal fragments and 50 high qual a day. One highly recommended add-on is the roof access. Hatch it out the wooden floor tile and create an airlock with two garage doors pointing towards the center of the base. Since the July 2020 update, minicopters have become even more valuable. They no longer spawn around roads, but they can be bought at Bandit Camp for a considerable amount of scrap. However, as long as they are parked indoors, it will take 36 hours until they decay. Thus, if you plan on having a minicopter, you should extend the roof access into a hangar. The most important upgrade, in my opinion, is external tool cupboards. They prevent raiders from griefing the base even if they destroy the main tool cupboard. Here we are building a novel disconnectable TC. Credit for the concept goes to DT, who showed me this approach back in January 2020, as well as to Atmos4 for being the first to show this specific design on YouTube. I link his video in the description if you are looking for more detailed build steps. Here we are building a single external TC in front of the main entrance. 
The twig floor tile connects the TC. Destroy it to disconnect the TC from the arm. Replace it to reconnect the TC. You can nicely combine this with a compound airlock. Build an alone in Tokyo style airlock on that arm. Then surround the rest of the base with high external walls. Beware though, compounds make you look rich. It can be safer to just rely on the auto turrets to create a safe zone around the base. If you want to add a shooting floor instead of a minicopter hangar, I would recommend adding square floors between those gaps. Make sure you attach the floor tiles to the left sides as seen from the inside. This way you can add single doors to cover the gaps. The top can be surrounded by roof ramps. However, this is just an inspiration. I'll leave the details up to you. I hope you found this video helpful. With those design alternatives, you should have plenty of options to adapt the aggravator to how the wipe is going. As always, take care. Evil Wurst, out.